I remember sitting with one scholar and he said, every dua is heard by Allah. Every single dua is heard by Allah. It's a matter of time for that dua to come and plug in. Some people it's a few days, some people it's months, some people it's years. Don't ever think that Allah did not accept your dua. Never. All of us, if you sit and think about some du'as you've made in your life that happened five years later, it happened 10 years later, but you don't realize it came. It definitely came when the time was right. That's Allah's plan. Trust Allah. We were talking about Jannah. Sometimes we tend to forget that we need to work towards Jannah rather than arguing about what we're going to be getting in Jannah. Like I say, look at the path. You can see it's there. You know it's there. And you know the destination is also punched in. You just follow the path. Don't worry about now when I get there, this, when I get there, that. The other day I took my children somewhere and I punched it on the GPS. And we are following the GPS. It says turn left. It says turn right. It says continue. We did exactly that. Knowing in our hearts that, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to get there. And when we get there, we'll see what there is. There might be restrictions, they might not, they might not even let us in. It might be closed, even though it says it's open because, you know, times have changed, right? Wallahi, our conviction in the GPS of Allah should be far stronger than that. Far stronger. Don't worry what you're going to get. I would never bother about what exactly I'm going to get in Jannah. What I'm bothered about is for me to get there. That's all. And that should be the case with all of us. Worry about getting there. They say, even if you are the last person to enter Jannah, you should be excited. You should, hey, I made it. Subhanallah. No matter where, what? Allahu Akbar. I have little children ask me sometimes, you know, if I'm in Jannah on one level and another person is in Jannah on another level and I wish to meet them or they wish to meet me, what will happen? I said, Allah will make it happen in a way that I can't explain to you. But inshallah, when we get there, we'll just nod our heads and say, hey, it happened. You see, I don't know. I just know it will happen. And I know that Allah can keep you in a certain way. You know, there's a very interesting uh, uh, hadith that comes to my mind. A very interesting. It says, whoever has had intoxicants, meaning that whoever has had the, the intoxicating wines of the dunya will not be having the wines in Jannah. Meaning, say they are forgiven and they change their lives and whatever. So now here comes a man. He says, hey, I had a bad life in the past. I used to drink. And you know, now I've changed my life and inshallah I'm looking forward to Jannah, but why won't I have the alcohol, meaning the, the, the wines, it's called wines, it's not intoxicating. The one in Jannah is not intoxicating. Why won't I have it in Jannah? Imagine I'm, it's going to be something that I'm going to want. And when I want it and Allah's going to say no, doesn't it negate another, another verse of the Quran which says, once you get into Jannah, you get what you want. So I said the best explanation of the ulama is something simple. Allah removes from your entire system even the thought of it. You won't think of it. I mean, if you loved something and you got into a place where there's something billions of times better than that, would you even think of that? You wouldn't even want it. It won't even cross your mind perhaps. One day, years later in the dunya, we might think about it. In the akhirah, Allah will occupy you with so much of goodness it's not going to come.